Welcome to the course of wireless sensor networks. This is lecture number 10 and today the topic for discussion is operation syst operating system perspective keeping in view functional and non-functional aspects for wireless sensor networks. I am your instructor Zishan Bangash. So let's move to the outlines of our today's discussion. So today we will first of all discuss some basic concepts we have already studied in the course of operating system. However, these concepts will be reviewed keeping in view some functional aspects like data types, interrupt handling, system calls, memory allocation and threading issues uh, of the operating system keeping in view the resource constraints for wireless sensor network and then we will be discussing some non-functional aspects of operating system for a wireless sensor network keeping in view some overheads that of the system some portability and some dynamic programming issues so let's discuss the first outline first agenda of our today's discussion and that is about the functional aspects so what is an operating system an operating system is a thin layer and this thin layer is between a hardware and an application layer and uh, the purpose of this layer is to provide abstraction to the application from the hardware by hiding the details of that hardware so it basically helps in providing the programming abstraction to the developers now the main purpose of operating system is the interaction of the application with the hardware and to make it less complex now some concepts uh, that we already know from the course of operating system that the operating system are classified as either a single task or a multitasking system that whether it will be executing ex executing one task at one time or it can be ex executing multiple tasks at the same time by doing context switching between different tasks or it can be a single user only one user can use this operating system or in case of client server environment a multi user operating system so multitasking actually creates an overhead because uh, the concurrent processing consumes resources and for wireless sensor network uh, we have very limited computation and memory resources so the multitasking operating system at current stage may not be the choice for a wireless sensor network so we will we will currently be relying on a single task operating system for wsn and that is the reason that uh, in most of the wireless sensor applications they are basically uh, having oh, observing one phenomena for example uh, in a wsn application for uh, sensing the a phenomena of uh, heat can only observe only this phenomena so multiple applications cannot be deployed because if we are using multiple applications on that was uh, WSN so we will be using uh, multitasking operating system and that uh, multitasking uh, operating system will be uh, using the concurrent processing Cap me mechanisms and that will resource that will waste the that will uh, create uh, the uh, resource constraints so <clears throat> single task operating system uh, have some restriction that it have a very short duration for the tasks and uh, so we need to uh, discuss operating system on several factors and uh, we have categorized for the dis our discussion keeping in view the functional and uh, non-functional aspects of the operating system so uh, let's discuss the functional aspects 
and uh, the first aspect functional aspect is the data types so <clears throat> interaction between the different subsystems in a system that uh, uh, take place uh, because of this uh, data types so, and these data types can be a simple data type like integer float or it can be an, a complex data type like structures objects errors so, uh, so that interaction take place through data types and the second important thing is through some well formulated standardized protocols and in these protocol these data types are used so complex data uh, types have more capability but the main limitation is that they are basically uh, consumes more resources and this is again a challenge in wireless sensor network so while using complex data types in in, in a programming uh, uh, programming app in programming an application for wsn uh, will create resource constraints so choice of the data type whether to have a simple or a complex da da data type is uh, one of the uh, aspects that need to be considered by the programmer or by the designer so for example the uh, complex data type includes struct and enum and the simple data types uh, like integer float they have very limited expression cap uh, capabilities whereas the complex data type like struct and enum have more expression capabilities so c language programming language is an example in which simple data types mostly used and we can use complex data type as well so here uh, in the figure we can just have a quick view of the different simple data types and the complex data type so we have already discussed about that so <clears throat> let's discuss about the second functional aspect and that is about the scheduling so there are two scheduling mechanism in operating system we already know it from the uh, concept of operating systems uh, um, uh, in which in, in our previous uh, discussions and in, in in the previous course of operating system that the first one is the queuing based scheduling and that have also some uh, restrictions some challenges and the another one is the round ribbon scheduling so queuing scheduling one of the example is the fifo uh, but here the problem is that this fifo first in first out have an issue related to that the tasks are not treated fairly and but the advantage is that simple and uh, and, and utilizes uh, less resources so uh, we can for wireless sense and network we uh, we can consider it uh, at the cost of fairness uh, because wsn always uh, are, is interested in all those operation which are which uses less resources and uh, another queuing based scheduling is the sorted queue uh, again but this sorted queue uh, uh, consumes some computation for estimating the execution duration so that might uh, uh, um, that might have a system overhead and one of the example of this sorted queue is the shortest job first uh, mechanism we already uh, know this from the knowledge of operating systems concepts regarding the second scheduling mechanism the round uh, ribbon scheduling it's basically a time sharing technique and uh, uh, multiple tasks we can execute uh, using concurrently using this scheduling mechanism so this is one aspect <clears throat> so uh, whether uh, tasks are executed concurrently or uh, one after another a scheduler can either be a non preemptive scheduler that uh, uh, once a task is start, has been started so the, the the schedule will not preempt it will not interrupt it and it will be executed till its end and then the next task is uh, is 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 uh, is, uh, is is transferred for processing and or the 
uh, the scheduler may be a preventive, uh, preemptive scheduler that if a higher priority uh, task receives, so it uh, interrupts uh, and and a low uh, priority tasks may be suspended for a temporary while and a high priority task will be executed and then uh, the low priority task will receive as per the schedule assigned for uh, executing the remaining part of the process. Now just look at the two types of scheduling in non preemptive scheduling just uh, look at the process number uh, p2 in non preemptive scheduling so the p2 once start executing it will complete it will complete take its burst time cpu burst time that is 6 millisecond and after that it completes then the task p3 will be executed and there on p1 and p0 however in preemptive scheduling the p2 task executed for one millisecond however upon receive of the high priority uh, task which is p3 the p2 is, uh, is 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 shifted and p3 will be started executing and upon the uh, scheduling time the p2 when executed it will execute it in, in the remaining as a remaining uh, task for five milliseconds and in current situation it is at the end of the queue so this is an example for that is elaborating a non preemptive scheduling and preventive preemptive scheduling so about the second uh, uh, functional aspects uh, the stacks we already know it from the course of data structure that what stacks are it's basically works on the principle of uh, first in first out so a data structure last in first out so a data structure that stores data temporarily uh, in a memory and it works on by piling one data upon another and the objects are executed using the principle of last in first off so what the data that has been inputted at in, in, in lastly will be first pulled out and uh, there is a counter that is decremented and similarly we are going to insert it any uh, any data so that will be inserted at the top of the stack or the top of the data which was last inputted so the another functional aspect is the system call so basically uh, the uh, it basically system calls decouples the uh, concerns of accessing hardware resources from the implementation uh, delay uh, details so uh, whenever any user or any service want to access the hardware so these system calls will be called will be called uh, without knowing how that hardware will be accessed so these system calls uh, will will interact with the hardware and perform and 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 and, and, is, and is executed and the uh, and the and the hardware uh, utilization can be taken place so another important aspect is the handling interrupt so uh, what is uh, uh, handling interrupts and interrupt is basically a signal an asynchronous uh, signal from a hardware device uh, or it may be from uh, several system events uh, or operating system itself so it occurs uh, an interrupt causes basically that the processor to interrupt executing the present instruction or tasks and an uh, uh, interrupt uh, uh, basically calls a particular interrupt handler to be executed and interrupt signals can have uh, varying priority levels and on the base of that the interrupts can be handled a uh, high priority interrupts can interrupt a low level interrupt so there's another concept of interrupt mask that uh, uh, that is that is uh, related to specifying it that the program decides while it's uh, coding that whether uh, it this programs needs to be interrupted or not and this is called interrupt mask now uh, the the outline related to another functional aspect is uh, the multi-threading and uh, threading concepts we already know it from the concepts 
uh, uh, we have learned in operating system that a thread uh, is the path or is a, is a by a processor or a program during its execution so it's basically a sort of process and uh, uh, that process can further be subdivided and a task or we can say that a task can be divided into several logical pieces and we can call that multi-threading threading, threading. Uh, so uh, scheduled these multi-threaded uh, uh, threads are scheduled independently from each other and that can be termed as a separate process uh, that can be treated like a separate process and uh, they can execute concurrently so there are two advantage of multi-threading operation that they do not uh, uh, block other tasks uh, because they are executing concurrently and uh, short duration tasks can be executed uh, along along with the long duration but however they have some limitation that this multi-threading mostly consume resources so the figure shows uh, an example of single instruction stream or a single threaded and a multi-threaded process and that that both can utilize a common memory and computation so we already know this from the concept of operating system so we can also consider this functional aspect in wireless sensor network however uh, keeping in view the resource constraint the multi-threaded application more threads will be utilizing more resources so uh, so up to how number uh, uh, the threads should be divided or, or multi-threading should be performed that that's a questions to be answered so threads cannot be created endlessly so that creation of threads slow down the processor we already know that it utilizes so no sufficient resources to further divide so this is one of the main concern while keeping while considering this functional aspect for wireless sensor network so the operating system has the responsibility that it keeps the number of threads to a manageable size using a thread pool so this is another there is another concept we have already read in operating system a thread pool that there are limited number of threads uh, and that threads can be assigned uh, to a particular process um, so the, this this restricts the number of threads in an op in executed in a system so because endlessly creation of threads will create a memory overhead and computation overhead so another uh, so decision whether to use threads or even programming that needs for separate stacks again needs for estimated maximum size for saving context information and similarly the thread based programs used multi threads of control within a single program or a single address space and the uh, another functional aspect to be discussed uh, is uh, the memory allocation so, and uh, the memory unit is basically a precious resource and the reading and writing to a memory is always costly so for how long a memory is allocated for a piece of program that determines the speed of the task that is executed so memory can be allocated to a program and it can be allocated statically uh, but the requirement for mes memory must be known in advance so this is a challenge and uh, this, that static memory is used eff effectively because we know already the allocation to be performed so here the runtime adoption is not allowed however in case of dynamic uh, uh, dynamically memory assigned the requirement for memory is not in advance so it have a flexibility that it enables flexibility in programming but uh, produces a considerable management overhead so in this video in this first part of this lecture in this video when we have discussed the functional aspect in the upcoming video video 2 of this lecture we will be discussing the non-functional aspect of uh, operating system keeping in view the wireless sensor network considerations thank you